The Execution of Joanna Bormann During World War II, the criminal execution of Nazis was on such a level that many historians call that era the darkest hour of humankind because of the dictatorship of Adolf Hitler. But after building different concentration camps throughout the country, the Nazis decided to set some new levels of brutality. These camps were made to introduce the prisoners to hell on earth, and they succeeded in that too. There were many male and female guards in the camps to ensure that no prisoners could run off and make the system according to the Nazi government. Women were no less than men when it came to brutality, violence and giving painful deaths to prisoners. Joanna Bormann is a perfect example of that. She was one of the most brutal and dangerous female guards serving at many concentration camps from 1938 to 1945 before she was executed for her war crimes and brutality. She used to love torturing prisoners in many painful ways, such as releasing her own German shepherd on the prisoners. She used to set it free against the prisoners and it used to bite and rip them. The dog allegedly killed prisoners twice after Bormann encouraged it to rip the helpless victims to death. Because of her love for dogs and using them to torture and kill prisoners, she was also called the Woman with the Dog, or in German, Die Frau mit den Hunden. Even though she was a lady, she still didn't have any softness for other women and used to torture and beat prisoners in the camp. In the end, her dog used to do his job of biting those ladies. Moving forward, many endless and brutal crimes have been registered in her name, and being such a cruel lady at the age of 45 is something we can only imagine. But even though she wasn't trained like other female guards, she has set many examples of brutal executions and crimes, which were enough to threaten any soul in the camps where she worked. Joanna Bormann was born on September 10, 1893, and some report that in her early life she was profoundly religious and engaged in very honorable and missionary activities. Before World War II, she joined the Auxiliary SS in 1938 when she was 45. But she began her journey in 1933 when she entered the Lichtenberg concentration camp in Saxony, one of the earliest facilities built by the Nazis and opened by the SS in 1933. Once the camp had over 2,000 prisoners, but as time passed and things changed, it became only a women's camp. When the new Ravensbrück concentration camp opened, she was relocated along with all the other prisoners and the previous camp was closed. The Ravensbrück camp was infamous because that was the place where women guards used to get training to be ruthless and vicious guards of the particular camp. Also, women such as Joanna Bormann were also primary reasons why the prisoners used to choose to die in the battlefield or even commit suicide, rather than to live a life worse than hell itself. They were educated by cruel women, such as Maria Mandel and the majority of the female guards who went through Ravensbrook and learnt how to mercilessly abuse prisoners. Bormann was getting what she wanted, a good salary and the joy of abusing prisoners physically and mentally, but her life was about to change, which she wasn't aware of. She was one of few women chosen for guard duty at Auschwitz in occupied Poland in March 1942. They were transported right away because the camp was rapidly expanding. She was small in stature, but the manner in which she treated the prisoners, regardless of their age or health, made her well known among the other guards and the prisoners. Bormann was believed to be in charge of women prisoners outside the camp, and she threatened them with a huge dog if they grew grumpy and refused to work correctly. Later in the same year, in October, Bormann arrived to Auschwitz-Birkenau as an Aufseherin in October 1942. Bormann was eventually transferred to Budi, a nearby subcamp where she continued to torture inmates. There were many reports against her by her own colleagues and other higher authorities because of inhuman and brutal perspectives towards the prisoners. No doubt the Nazis were not trying to save them, but their concerns were to establish a balance and threaten with minimum exposure, and she was doing just the opposite. Bormann was sent to the auxiliary camp at Hindenburg in Silesia in 1944, as German casualties increased. Transferring from one camp to another didn't bother her, because she knew that wherever she would go, she would do the best at what she could do, and that was spreading fear of death and the Nazi government taking part in selections and deciding who would work and live in the camps and who would die gave her a godlike feeling and it was clearly seen in her behavior and she was not like other people around her the story does not finish there those women who had been bitten by her german shepherd were immediately sent to the gas chambers bormann consistently denied it but the accusations were persistent her cruelty had no end and there is an incident which will perfectly portray her evil deeds bormann once observed someone stealing something she simply grabbed her by the hair and threw her to the ground, allowing the dog to bite her. 
The injuries were so serious that a large pool of blood formed. When the doctors were called for her treatment, even they were disturbed because she was so badly injured that she couldn't even move. When Joanna noticed it, the prisoner was directly sent to her death in the gas chambers. She proved repeatedly that her violence was not dependent on her dog. She used to punch women so severely that during her trial, a woman named Dora Silberberg stated that Borman once hit a woman so hard that she was hospitalized for six weeks. Borman struck the woman so hard that her two teeth were knocked out and then ordered the dog to bite her because she couldn't work and come to the site. Eventually, after getting beaten and bitten multiple times, she died a very painful death. She arrived in March 1944 to her final posting, Bergen Belsen, near Sell, where she worked under Joseph Kramer, Irma Gressa, and Elizabeth Falkenrath, all of whom had served with her in Birkenau. The fact that she used to work with such a wicked witch in human form is enough to predict her mentality and way of executions. This may sound weird, but at Auschwitz and other camps, she used to get mad when a prisoner wore good and clean clothes. She used to beat them brutally and force them to undress to perform strenuous exercises as a punishment. She would even set her dog on women who didn't feel well physically due to workload and couldn't march back to Auschwitz. The dog was also like her only, and it would rip them to such an extent that they had to be admitted in the hospital on a stretcher. However, as the war turned against the Germans, she was transferred several times along with some other SS guards to fill the camp's guard pipeline. She returned to Ravensbrück in January 1945, where her crimes and brutality were at their peak, regardless of her growing age. The camp was unable to cope with the large number of prisoners transported there. There was insufficient food for everyone, and the sanitation was non-existent to the point where sickness lurked around every corner. If you read history books at the period, you will learn that the pigs were held to a different standard and treated better than the Jewish prisoners who came into the camps to work and fight for their lives. While the pigs were receiving adequate food and other facilities, the prisoners were going hungry and dying in agony. But her good days were over when the British Army captured Bergen-Belsen in April 15, 1945, discovering over 10,000 dead bodies who either died at the selections or by disease, and 60,000 survivors. All SS men were compelled to transport the dead by the liberators. There was an uncountable number of prisoners who were nearly dead or in worse condition. They were all found and saved by the British Army when they liberated the camp at the time. Along with some other SS guards, like Elizabeth Falkenrath, Joanna Bormann didn't run away from the camp, because they were there to make sure that law and dignity were maintained. Later on, it proved to be the biggest mistake of their lives. If there were awards for being inhuman and torturing people, there would have been hundreds of rooms filled with those awards in the name of Joanna Bormann. When she was asked during her trials why she joined the SS in 1938, she stated that she wanted to earn more money. But who knows whether she was telling the truth or not. She was charged with multiple war crimes and killings and her infamous identity as one of the beasts of Belsen. Bormann was also recognized as the Auschwitz complex's most feared guard, frequently participated in selections, selecting who would live and who would die. Just by reading or watching about such characters, you can imagine that the Nazis were nothing but machines that used to produce human-faced demons who were made to give pain and death in society. During her trials, two witnesses claimed to have seen her dog attack a woman, and Bormann spoke to a number of SS officers after encouraging the dog to attack the prisoners. She was questioned by the British about her bringing a dog inside the camp and using it on the prisoners, to which she claimed that many women in Auschwitz had dogs with them, and denied all the allegations with which she was charged. But her denial wasn't enough to save her from justice. After being found guilty by the British government for several crimes, she was hanged with Elizabeth Falkenrath by the famous British executioner Albert Pierpoint. He also wrote about Bowman. She limped down the corridor looking old and haggard. She was 52 years old, standing only a little over five feet. She was trembling as she was put on the scale. In German, she said, I have my feelings. This might sound emotional, but if you see how she used to abuse and beat prisoners, your mind would be changed by the actual reality. And her story ended there, just like any evil should deserve.